All right, good day. Welcome to Chad's Cards. Today we are going to take a look at left fielders and what I feel are the best long-term investments at that particular position. So um, again, what I am looking for in this series are people that are on a Hall of Fame track. So uh, it's, obviously it's going to be very difficult for any of the players to predict accurately whether any of these players are going to actually make it. But if they're on some sort of track, then it is worth spending the money. And so really what this tries to do is just break down uh, different price levels and what you want to pay for guys whether or not they're on a certain track and so we are looking for is a certain amount of war different accolades and things of that nature um, to have so your cards have lasting power you want your cards to have demand and whether that's because they're in the hall of fame like uh, ted williams ricky henderson carly stromsky etc or for other reasons like barry bonds and pete rose as long as their name is relevant there's going to be demand surrounding those players and your cards will tend to hold value uh, over time so obviously collect who you want but there are prices to be paid for each tier and we'll try and break that down so got a list of uh looks like we've got about six guys here with an honorable mention so let's get started here and really the criteria that i'm looking for for is if they're on a track for a certain amount of war by a certain amount of age right right around you know age 35 if you can have accumulated about 60 to 65 war or wins above replacement then you would be considered to be on track um, a few other things have to happen of course uh, but you know this is a, a good roadmap as good as any roadmap i think so it's a it's a starting point at least so let us start off with the honorable mention and that is mr randy Arizona. arena and this is a player that came onto the scene at the back half of this year and just started crushing it. A lot of the, uh, a lot of his buzz surrounded home runs, and he hit a lot of them. <laughs> so in the play at the back end of the season in the playoffs, single handedly uh, carried the Rays uh, most of the way, um, along with the pitching and obviously other players. But uh, he did a lot of the heavy lifting in the in the playoffs here. And so uh, 280, 280 batting average with a 386 BABIP. So or excuse me, a 306 BABIP. <laughs> the eyes. Um, uh, don't don't tell my wife, all right? She'll say I need glasses, and she's probably right. So uh, anyways, a uh, high strikeout rate, a uh, low-ish walk rate. So look for a little regression in that batting average. The thing that concerns me the most, he got a lot of attention for his uh, home runs, and his home run to fly ball ratio was around uh, 50%, pretty close to that level there. So um, 25 to 30%. So of every ball he hit in the air, half of them left the park. So 25 to 30% is what um, really good power guys do. You can have these spurts. Uh, from time to time, but uh, they're usually not terribly sustainable. So Randy Arizona doesn't have a lot of PSA 10 stuff out there just yet. I imagine that will come flooding in. I would temper your expectations on that one if you really want one. If he comes out and people are asking 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks, uh, be be careful about that. He is getting a late start. He's 20, um, he's 20, uh, 25 years old. He'll be almost 26 when the season starts next year. So it's a little bit of a later start, accumulating only one war. And uh, I, I think he's behind the eight ball a little bit. Now he could come out and continue to rake next year, start putting up six, seven WAR on an annual basis. Um, he needs to average, you know, nearly six over the next over the next decade to get to that sixty by thirty five. Um, but I think um, I, I would look for regression, and if you have to have a Randy Arena card, if you can get it for in that thirty dollar range, it's probably a fair price at some point. So let's uh, let's get into the top six I have for you today. And number six is Alex Verdugo for the Boston Red Sox. He is 24 years old, accumulated 3.7 more so far in his young career. And what I like about him is he's just a hitter. Um, three, uh, three, 300 average with a elevated bat. So, but he's going to be around a 300 hitter. You can see the projections have him around 290. He's done that the past couple of years and now he's getting playing time in Boston over a complete series. So the drawback I think on him is not a lot of home runs. Um, and so he's going to be an average guy, but if that young core of Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, and uh, along with um, Verdugo uh, can can really start to put it together and they get a little bit a little bit of help, you know, maybe he can be part of a uh, you know a winning team that's going to give him a little bit of a lift. So everything about him lines up. The guy can hit, the guy can play, no question about it. The home runs aren't going to be there, but if he can have a very a very long career and maintain that, you know, sure he could be in that consideration level for for. Uh, for baseball immortality. So again, long shot ish, but right now you're only looking at about 30 bucks for his cards, which is for those guys that are kind of long shots, not a lot, um, you know, not much of a track record. $30 is kind of a, is, is a fair price. And I think he has a better shot than other players in that. Um, we'll go over the, the spreadsheet, but if you look at like the Ben attendees and the Ian Haps and the Nick Solax and Austin Meadows and stuff like that, he's got his, he, maybe a better shot than most and his price is being priced similarly. All right. Top five. Number five is Giancarlo Stanton. And with him, it's all about health. 40 war accumulated. He's going to be 32, or he just turned 31. Um, 
And in his career, when he's played, he's been a terrific player. He needs to average just over five WAR over the next five years to get to that sixty to get that sixty level here. Uh, he does have, uh, in, excuse me, uh, do, 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 yes, he's got an MVP, a couple of top ten MVP finishes, four All Star games, and so he's got the hardware to go along with this performance on the field. And you can see when he's played, you know, 120, 130 or plus games. Uh, he's been able to put up five or six war, and so that's what we're asking him to do, stay healthy and play. When he has fallen short of that, um, he still puts up the numbers, but he needs to really accumulate those stats here. So um, when you look at the Marlins, you know, 159, 158 games, you know, seven, seven and four war. So basically, if he's on the field, he's going to do it. So for him, it's a question of health. Right now, you can get his PSA card for about $60, and so people aren't believing in the health part of things, which is which is fair. Um, there's a there's kind of a spotty record here, um, especially as of late. So um, if he is healthy right now, I, I would say this is uh, an interesting card to take a uh, to take a flyer on his 2010 update series uh, for sixty dollars. He's again being priced as someone who has a lot of questions about him, and the only question about him is not whether or not he can what he can play. That's been established. It's you know is he, is he going to be healthy? So, all right, number four, we're getting into that top tier of guys who uh, really have. A, it's, I'm not. I, I don't like to throw out this term "easy road" by any stretch, but they've got a lower bar to go. They just need to keep keep doing what they're doing, but they need to do it for a long time, which is hard. So Kyle Tucker, 23 years old, uh, accumulated one WAR. So his path um, really needs to average about 4.88 WAR over the next 12 years to get to that um, to get to that 60 by age 35. So this is more of a function of his age. And will he get playing time? Is basically what it is. If you look at his minor league numbers, the guy he can he can hit. You know, he's about a, you know, 260, 270 hitter. He's got, you know, 20, 30 stolen base uh, speed. He's got, you know, 30 home run power. Um, can he get the playing time? Can he reproduce those results at a, at a major league level? And um, and can he maintain that speed for a while? Can he age gracefully is what he's going to have to do. So the hard part about him right now, he's, he's, his PSA 10 is, is about $30. And again, I think there's more upside to him than other players in that price range, and so that's why uh, I, that's why I like him. Uh, that's why the, the the projections like him as well. Um, but he hasn't done it yet, and so if he had come in you know, like the next couple of players early and actually done it, then you could see this card uh, at a uh, you know at that seventy eighty dollar one hundred fifty dollar level. So um, if he has a good year next year, you know I would expect this card to be thirty. It could be upwards of fifty or sixty dollars pretty easily if he if he plays next year and he produces. Number three on my list here is Eloy Jimenez. Um, <laughs> just a beast and one of my favorite players uh, honestly so he uh he's accumulated a three and a half war in his young career here he's only he'll be 24 when the season starts next year um but everything is just lining up for him you know he was he was almost a 300 hitter this year um with a 340 bat so look for some regression he's probably in that you know i think he's kind of that 280 285 hitter um but he's got 40 home run power and that's just um, what a what a what a great combination. So his defense is really really terrible. <laughs> so that's going to hurt his overall WAR. Um, but if he can average you know a little over four and a half over the next over the next decade, um, again <laughs> I don't mean, mean to make it sound easy or anything like that. But if he can just do what he's doing basically, then this is uh, a generational type talent. And right now you can get his PSA ten for. Um, there I was seeing a lot of them within the last week for 40 45 bucks shipped and now um let's just let's see here uh, who do we have oh spoiler alert oh i'm gonna ruin it all here there we go <laughs> um i think i want a different one anyways yeah whatever we'll just go with this anyways eloy Jimenez. and so his card has kind of found support in that 30 dollar range um whenever it hits there there seems to be a lot of buying here and starting to, to spike again here, most recent sales upwards actually around that $60 area, which I think is where it probably should be. If he has a really good year again this year, then you will see um, probably something like 80 bucks on Eloy Jimenez. Um, so this is, uh, again, this is a player that, uh, one of my favorite young players, uh, and one of the, the cards I'm, I'm focusing in on just because of that potential that he has and what he's already done to this point here. I'm going to pause for just a second and, and fix those graphs. All right, so number two on our list is Christian Yelich, and this one's kind of interesting. He's 28 years old. He'll be 29 when the season starts next year. He's accumulated 35 WAR, um, so he is on track. He needs to average about 3.67 WAR on a, and an annual basis to age 35 to get to that 60. And, and honestly, left field's a little bit higher, so 65 may have to be the uh, the number here. Um, wasn't doing. He was a good player. He was a very good player in Marlins for the Marlins, but he wasn't 
this level player here where he started putting up seven and you know seven eight war on an annual basis here so he has uh during that time those last couple of years does have one mvp two mvp 10 um mvp top 10 finishes a couple of rsr games and a gold glove and since coming in the brewers you know he's really espoused the uh the fly ball era so hit a ball in the air and it goes out of the park and so you can see uh, what he's uh, what he's been doing here is the home run to fly ball ratio. Um, you know, a lot of you know hitting a decent amount of fly balls and then putting a third of those balls out of the park. And so he was able to continue that this year. But the fly balls that he was that he was hitting uh, dipped a little bit. So can he get back to that next year? Is really the question for Christian Yelich. So again, he's had a couple of monster seasons. Um, he's going to need a, a few more of these. This year was a dud by any stretch. I mean, there's no way around it. You know, 205 average with a low BABIP. Um, isolated power was um, not not to his standard here. So um, next year will be a big year for him. Can he uh, get back to this type of player or something close to that? Um, and so right now he's being priced at about 150 bucks. Um, let's see, that is... Is that still Eli? There we go. I don't know. Maybe that was... Yeah, yeah, that was Yelich. All right, whatever. I'm a mess on this stuff here. So, uh, there was a decent level of support at this, a uh, little over hundred dollar area here, and about 150 bucks. You can see that there's a lot of accumulation here. And for players that are, you know, they've got that established track record, and they're looking at, you know, having to put up a low amount of war on an annual basis because they've banked a lot already. You know, 150 bucks is kind of the kind of the number where you're looking at. You know, Freddie Freeman was at that level, and you know, there's a few other players there. Um, once you get to once you start getting into that more of that more definite track uh, then you start to see that two three hundred dollar card where you know Mookie bets and, and all that kind of stuff um you know, Pujols I mean even more than that really uh, a couple other names here so he, there there's buying that takes place in this level here it's coming up if he can get back to that six seven more player next year then this becomes probably closer to a two hundred dollar card so with him he's had a couple of years that are at this point more of an outlier than than what he's done but he is a pretty solid four or five war player so you know, if he can at least be that, then he's going to have some strong consideration in this price. You know, again, I think this is kind of your floor right in here. Um, your price will uh, hopefully start to uh, to rise up to that $200 area. So uh, that puts him at number two on my list here. And the number one player for left field should be no surprise. You know, I spoiled it about four times already, but it shouldn't be a surprise anyways here. Here's Juan Soto. So uh, just turned 22 years old. He's banked 11 more. Everything just lines up here. His average, okay, 351 average, probably not him <laughs> with a 368 uh, uh, batting average and balls in play. But if he's still a 300 hitter with 40 home runs, um, defense is atrocious, but uh, like that offense is off the charts. You look at you know weighted runs created, you know 200. Your average player is 100, and elite player is 130. He just blew them all the way this year. He could have been a MVP if he played a full season, which he, he almost did, but he got no problems giving it to Freddie. So uh, certainly liked to see that. Um, but this is this is not a Hall of Fame track. This is a um, all-time great, um, all-time great elite generational talent track and so um anything you can do to get his card at this point i think you just do it so price price be darned so pretty strong uptrend and that's just continued every time it gets to this line it bounces it bounces you know got a little hot here bounces and i you know right around 175 bucks is where that price is now and again one more year of this and this is perpetually going to be probably a two to 250 fifty dollar card um, back up in this area here and then uh, in, in five years six years when he's 28 29 um, you could see probably not Mike Trout level because then you start to get into print runs and availability and all that kind of good stuff but you could see Juan Soto sitting around you know five six hundred bucks you know for that for that high grade example now you don't have to get PSA 10s in any of these cards here the raw versions or whatever we're just trying to identify players and what to pay so let's jump over to the spreadsheet here and really what we're looking at is just grouping players into, you know, probabilities and, you know, what track they're on and, and what you should pay for them. And so a uh, good example um, of what I'm trying to what I'm trying to throw out here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. All right. Alex Gordon, who just recently retired, he's got eight gold gloves and three all-star games. Just a terrific, terrific player, but he's going to be well short of the Hall of Fame. And his card's about 20 bucks. Okay. So if your guys, whatever kind of career they have, if they're not making the Hall at the end, this is the range you can see your players and so you could have amazing seasons in between i think you're still going to regress to that 20 30 dollar area <clears throat> at some point so um, marcelo zuna had a terrific season but he's a 29 year old he's got to average over six war over the next five years 
Uh, $60 is probably too much. I think there's a lot of recency bias here. So anything in the red here, maybe this should be about a $20 or $30 card. You have the players in the yellow here, which you know, they've got a shot, but they've, they've, they really need to prove it. Or an, Alec, or an Andrew McCutcheon's place, they need to kind of keep it going. You know, he's 33 years old, really declined over the past couple of years. He's been a negative war player for the past, you know, three years. And he needs to put up five win seasons over the next couple. So it's like, that's eh, probably a long shot. So I think $90 is a little bit overvalued. But the rest of these players here, you know, if you're spending you know just a little bit more than this range, you're probably going to be okay. Maybe you hit on one or two of them, like a Austin Meadows, if he gets it going. Or um, like I mentioned earlier, Alex Verdugo or Arizona could have, Arizona could have a really hot streak. You know, he could have a multi-year hot streak. He'd be a great player, maybe just come up short. Um, so you could get him at a, at a lower price. You know, make sure you pay the right price for it. But maybe that's something you want to kind of consider flipping at some point here if that's your thing um but then you want to get to this top four or five however you want to do it these are probably your longer term holds and you can afford to pay more for them because they're probably going to hold their value because they are on that track so you look at like a like the soto the yellow Chimenez, tucker and maybe stanton um probably a fair price for these guys undervalued for soto for the most part i think eloy is undervalued if tucker has a good year this is definitely undervalued but these are the guys with the best shot and don't be afraid to go a little bit higher on these guys because their longer term prospects are probably greater than uh than than the rest of these so again a lot of things can happen we've heard this it's important to reviews and do the work every year um but uh this is what i have for now and this is what i'm going with <laughs> hopefully um there's some value to you in this one and mostly i hope you enjoyed it so that's what i have and have a great rest of the day thank you